Session 3, the action plan for protection of life and property, the role of the district magistrate. And we are very delighted to have with us Collector and District Magistrate North Goa, Mr. Swaptil M. Nayak, to speak to us on this session. Uh, very good afternoon to all <coughs> present here. And I uh, wish to thank uh, Goa Can, the International Center, <coughs> the Director of Social Welfare for giving me an opportunity to be here. I think uh, whatever is the outcome of the session, one thing which would happen now is that I think our own system, which has been idle, will be breaking up. Because I was going through, after getting this invite, I just went through my uh, own office, what we have done and what we should be doing as per this act. And I realized myself that we have been very lacking. So I admitted in the starting, whatever I am going to say now, yeah. that this is our role and our responsibility, I think only 20% of that has been done by us. So what I am going to tell you now is 80% has to be achieved and I assure you that I will work on this and get it uh, achieved. Okay. Okay. Uh, all aware, right, I think in the morning, Professor Matt gave me and uh, and Dr. Peter also mentioned about the whole aspects of uh, senior citizens and elderly. Uh, these are actually the three important things as far as the collectorate uh, of the district magistrate functions are concerned. Uh, we have the maintenance of welfare of parents in senior citizens act 2007. Then the Goa rules which were made in 2009, the Goa maintenance and welfare of parents in senior citizens rule. And the last two notifications which I have mentioned, uh, the one of both dated 24th of September 2009. These are relevant to us in the district magistrate because the first notification of the 3846 gives powers to the subdivisional magistrates as, main, uh, as uh, maintenance officers. And then to 3847, that notification gives the powers of appeal to the district magistrate. And we progress in the like, this is uh, section 7 of the act as, uh, as it is. The state government shall within a period of 6 months from the date of commencement of this act by notification constitute for each subdivision one or more tribunals. This has been done. This the notification of 2009 which I just mentioned is the one which uh, gives the powers to the subdivisional magistrates of each uh, subdivision to act as a tribunal for this act. Then uh, we go to the rules, basically. That's the, in the act, there's only this provision related to district magistrate. The rules, in the chapter 5, rule 19, it talks about the duties and powers of the district magistrate. Uh, the, it says that the district magistrate shall perform the duty and exercise the powers mentioned in subsection 2 and 3. So as to ensure that the provisions of the act and the rules are properly ca carried out in the district. As I said, initially in 2009-10, there was some activities which have been done. The district committees were constituted, the SDMs, there were meetings with the SDMs, the district magistrate. Uh, it was also discussed about how the inspection should be carried out and all, but further, I think 2011 onwards, quite much has ha happened in this state. Uh, it's also under this Rule 19 also, it's the duty of the district magistrate to ensure that the life and property of citizens of the district are protected and they are able to live with security and dignity. I think this is an important duty which has been touched on the district magistrate. Uh, the next uh, duty is to oversee and monitor the work of the tribunals and maintenance officers of the district with a view to ensuring timely and fair disposal of uh, matters for maintenance and execution of tri tribunal orders. Uh, in this, I would like to make a comment. Is uh, I just had a talk with the SDM yesterday over this issue. I have been told that hardly one uh, uh, application was filed under this whole act at the SDM's level. And uh, 
that same matter, the order has been passed, it has come and appealed to me now just last week. So, the, I think the awareness also about the provisions of the Act and the rules is also very, very poor. I think this needs to be, I think such forum should be the right place where this uh, provisions of this Act can be pointed out so that you can then further bring it down to the uh, needy people. There will be issues, a lot of issues on the ground, but I think we are they are not getting the right forum to come to and address those issues. <coughs> Oversee and monitor the working of old age homes in the district so as to ensure that they conform to the standards laid down in the uh, this rule and any other guidelines. Uh, this is one of the functions which the SDMs and uh, the DM is supposed to ensure. Uh, the SDMs have been uh, given directions to do it, but uh, another thing which I have noticed here is our unique setup here in Goa as compared to the other parts of India. And whenever any central act is implemented here in Goa, we face this problem. In the other states, uh, the district magistrate and the CEO of the ZP control everything that happens in the district. And even the staff of all the departments are reporting to the CEO or to the DM. But in Goa, we have a different total setup. The DM is given all the responsibilities and duties, but he doesn't have the concerned people under his, under his control. So it becomes a lot of issues which we are facing, and especially in respect of centrally made act. The central government goes by the general setup all over India. In Goa, we have the separate setup. So I think one of the reasons why this thing has not been going on is because in Goa, the Director of Social Welfare has been declared as the nodal department for this act. While the functions and duties are assigned to the SDMs and DMs, while the uh, nodal department is Director of Social Welfare. But I think uh, we will have to work, work out some mechanism. We have done it. It's not that it cannot be done. It becomes more difficult. So I will take it up with the Director of Social Welfare and ensure Uh, encourage and coordinate with the Panchayat, Principalities, Nehru Yuva Kendra's Education Institute and especially their NSS units, organizations and to see that uh, efforts and resources are effectively pooled for the welfare of senior citizens. I think this is a very important fact which is, uh, is given to the, uh, very important duty which is given to the DM. I think uh, as the Dr. Peter was saying, we have a shortage of volunteers. I think this issue could be taken up through this uh, district level uh, monitoring committee then. Uh, issue of provision of timely assistance and relief to senior citizens in the event of natural calamities and other amenities. Ensure periodic sensitization of officers of various departments and local bodies concerned with the welfare of citizens. I think this is also an important thing. To review the progress of investigation and trial of cases relating to senior citizens in the district. Uh, we have not been doing this on a regular basis, but uh, on and off, if there are any specific complaints received, we do take reports and comments from the police and give them directions wherever possible. But as I said, the people approaching the collectorate or the SDMs is also very, very minimal. Review the progress of investigation, which is the same thing. Ensure that dedicated number of specified application forms of maintenance are available in the offices of common contact, like Panchayat, etc. To promote establishment of dedicated helplines for senior citizens in district headquarters, not, not implemented. Perform such other functions as the government may by order assigned to the district magistrate in the in this via from time to time. So basically, the provisions of Rule 19, we talk about the duties and functions of the uh, uh, district magistrate. The same rules, uh, it also gives the uh, power to the district magistrate to give directions to any authority to get this provisions implemented. That power is uh, available in the DM and uh, in cases like uh, if the party does approach to the SDM for any help in the season, the SDM and DM have the right power to issue necessary direction. Uh, the 
Medium can give directors, directors to maintenance tribunals, conservation officers, panchayats, or any municipalities, or officers, any public health department, or anybody can be given directions on this behalf. Uh, this is also another important rule uh, 20, uh, which uh, talks about the protection of life and property of citizens. This actually is a combined effort to be done by the magistrate and the police. The police are required to be giving monthly reports of any specific cases of uh, uh, such nature of uh, senior citizens or uh, <coughs> elderly are affected. And, uh, this are to be monitored by the district monitoring committee on a regular basis. I think, uh, as I said, whenever there are specific cases, we are following it up by getting some comments and other things. But as a regular feature, these meetings have not been taken. Another power it is available to the DM is under Rule 18. This Rule 18 generally talks about admission to the uh, old age homes and all. So here there is a provision that in case somebody is not able to apply uh, because of some infirmity or something, then the DM has a few motor powers to direct that that person be uh, sent to that old age home. So these are, I think, some of the overall provisions uh, regarding this uh, act and rules where the DMs are concerned. I just taken a gist of the whole thing as it is and as it should be. But uh, as I start, uh, started with, uh, there are, I think, hardly about 20% of the things which have been implemented. It's the powers have been delegated to the SDM to DM. Uh, some monitoring is happening, but it is only on a case-to-case -case basis, it's not on a regular basis. And again, I think the awareness has been very lacking, so which is also the reason why we are also not receiving any cases. So I think uh, this, this, uh, I was uh, decided to be very brief, uh, just to cover the extra points wherein the DM rule is defined.
proposal from the government of India, which requires a village gram panchayat development committee. This is a mother committee, let's say, of 40 people, under which there should be 18 committees, children's committee, health and sanitation, etc., etc. Please tell me where these volunteers will come from. Are we going to ask St. Francis Xavier to send those volunteers or to Pertagali Mart? Who is going to go to LS? So please let me point out one thing to you. Please visit your police station. And this I want to also say in general. Now Mr. Subjit Naik is here. How many people have gone to him and said, Mr. Subjit Naik, glad to know that you are here. Anything you want, please call us. I'm Dotara Koyta and Sadhu Tattu. Anybody goes and asks the doctor, Dotara Tu Kosa Ha. Can I take a Zohar VSL on the Apoy? You never do that. See, people phone me and say, what is Goa Kent doing? There is no policeman in the police station. I want to find a complaint. When you never had a problem, did you go and say, Sir, Tu Kosa Ha. So, my request and appeal to you, please after this program, whenever you have the time, drop in in these offices, meet the deputy collector for example, because they will be in touch with the collector. Say hello, I am from friends, okay? And as far as these committees are concerned, think of names who you can suggest to be in the committee. We are also trying to expand it because when you say one committee per police station, please understand the police station has six panchayats under it. So the three people in the committee cannot have knowledge of six panchayats. So we are saying to them, have six committees, one for every panchayat. You are getting what I am saying. So we are trying to work with them to find solutions to the problem. Yeah. Yeah, Maria. Can we have some people who have yeah. questions in mind? Keep yourself ready because we will, yeah. I am aware of all the old age homes set up by sisters in the diocese, etc. And I am aware of one that is, um, in Panjim, near the All India Radio. Could you just inform us of the others which are set up by the government for senior citizens? Yeah, offhand, I think. Yeah. Can we? Yeah. Yeah. Can we do one thing? Yeah. We can work out an arrangement that this gets uploaded on the website. Uh, we will talk to Dr. Sachin Shinde also in South Goa to upload the registered home for the agent on the website once they are listed. So that will make it easier with the contact numbers so people can interact with them, volunteer your services, whatever. You know? And I think that's a very relevant question Marianne has asked. He is finally, even we have asked uh, Mr. Gaudi in the session which he will cover, which are the, the centers, AK centers, how many there are. So you can say, okay, if there's no center in my village, I will take the initiative to set up one. You, you get it. So it's a very relevant question. What is there? What is not there? What role can I play? Okay. Any other queries? Uh, if you have, yes, ma'am. Your name. Say your name. So we. I am Dr. Aida Mukherjee. Uh, Location. It's all about. Okay, okay. Uh, I have a question. Uh, that uh, these days, Aadhaar card is mandatory. Uh, not mandatory, but it's required uh, for a lot of uh, official work. And uh, there are very many senior citizens who have disability and they cannot access the centers where Aadhaar cards are made. But uh, in such a case, uh, is there any possibility that we can have some mobile van or something which can be, uh, which can help senior citizens, please? Yeah, I think we can look into that. Uh, we can have some sort of uh, camps which can be held in this uh, old age home for the daycare centers itself. Uh, I'll work out with the agency which is doing it on uh, from the central government. Yeah, I think uh, the legal aid cells who are present here from both the colleges can also look at this as a follow-up. Because I think in the South Goa collected already there is this kinder where students are going and you know sitting there and helping. But I, I understand Doctor what you're saying is like bring it actually to the home. And I think that's a superb idea to consider looking at the length and breadth of both it's a small place. Uh, you know, this is something that we definitely need to look at. Any other queries you've had? I, I appreciated that Mr. Naik, like uh, said at the beginning, there are a lot of things that we haven't done. So, you know, that knocked off a hell of a lot of questions because I was wondering, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking there's going to be such a long list. But I think that's the right way, right approach, because now what needs to be done, we can partner. You see, and, and of course, North Goa has one taluka less, by the way. Dr. Shinde has more talukas. There are seven talukas 
in the south of Goa now and five in the north. So I think that's one way we can look at where the collaboration is. Yes. I'm Adelik De Souza. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, you have said that 80% uh, of the work uh, from the Act is yet to be implemented. Any specific reasons because the Act is so long in force? Because what happens, sir? Tall promises are made, and the concerned officers they either promote it or thereafter they go. Because we had a problem with the implementation of the Disabilities Act. If you, sir, you remember, then we had to file a petition yeah. and get it implemented. Yeah. I just to to uh, uh, give you a heads on on this part, even in South Goa, given the. Uh, Yeah. So when Mr. Agarwal was the was the collector in South Goa, when I went through the act and I found that there is a district committee, etc., I wrote him a letter and I said, from what the notification reads, your committee has expired. It's over. Okay? And then he got alerted. And uh, when he had the renewed meeting, he, he said, you know, thank Goa can remind me. Now, I'm just trying to say, it could be any of us. So don't wait for an organization, NGO, even an individual can write it, sir. You know, like your fire extinguisher is like, it's lapsed, it's not renewed. Why can't we do that? Why can't we remind someone? We can do it. So what I want to point out, he put a system in place, like an SMS goes out to remind him that the meeting has to happen. And the, the file for the meeting was actually to be moved from the ground floor. So it, it, it is not somewhere far away. But as I said, when any act and rules requires, you know, involves the public, you can be sure you'll get a better response. So I think this itself will, will motivate a lot of people to take, uh, you know, interest and see that various provisions of the act are put in place. Yes, uh, Sandhya. Uh, I'm Sandhya Ram, Assistant Professor from BM Sargangar College of Law. Sir, what I want to bring to your notice or rather I'll ask you is that uh, it is seen from the rule that uh, from your by your order a sufficient number of application forms for maintenance should be made available with all local bodies and post offices as well as your own office. So first of all I want to know whether it is done. In case it's not done, can you make it available at the earliest along with a, state, uh, a notice board sort of a thing uh, saying that these forms are available so that that itself brings awareness when a person goes to panchayat or post office. These forms are available. So application for maintenance is available meaning curiosity comes and that itself can be a way of uh, starting the... Thank you. I think the forms were made available at SDM and Mangala offices. Uh, yeah. I would also like to suggest to all of you who live in panchayats and municipal councils, please you can also move what we call a proposal for information, what we call an information proposal. Most people go to Gram Sabha and say, I want the road, I want water supply, I want etc, etc. This is what we call an information proposal. You can say to the Gram Panchayat that this facility is available, these forms are available, please announce it in the Gram Sabha. Now this is another way, it's a proactive step of where you get information tabled in a very systematic manner. And I think since uh, Ma'am has raised the question, the legal aid cells also could have these forms in wherever they are sitting in, in North Goa or South Goa. The legal aid cells of both colleges could be also, uh, you know, contribute to getting these forms uh, available to people. Any other queries? Uh, yeah. Any, let's see any new faces for asking questions. No, no, I just field. want to know, you said you go and meet him. Is there any time that he would like people to approach? Because I'm sure he won't approach, like people to come or any time and walk into his office. Right, 12 to 1 are the general visiting hours, generally in the collected. But uh, yes, uh, any time later in the evening time, at least on my personal plans, I am available after 5 30 because generally we are moving around from meetings and all. But after 5 30, I am in the office. In reality, at least 7 7 7. Yeah, so let's see some in, new. Yeah, in Goa, uh, government collects a huge amount of money, money from the casinos and previously it was told that the Goa doesn't require money for this, only they will be used for senior citizens for uh, old age homes. To what extent the amount goes to the old age homes and if they go, 
the old homes, uh, old age homes of Goa will be the richest in the world. I think your point is well made. Mr. Gaudi will come in the afternoon. Then you can ask him if there is any shortfall in funds. Then your contribution can be there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, what? Uh, this uh, seminar today will surely be covered in the press and with what has been going on and that alone will create a big awareness all over the state that there is this uh, senior citizens act and who will be approached so that is like as good as an advertisement. Ma'am, I would also suggest if you can send the 10, 10 20 emails yourself today because <laughs> you are active on email. So you can send 10 friends of yours and inform them about it. Yeah. Can we have here and then one question here? Then we'll end it, please. Yes. Sorry, I come from Atom, and I'm a nurse from the government hospital. So I would like to know what provisions are present for the migrant dependent elderly who are dumped in government hospitals whose addresses and relatives cannot be located. Okay, so what you are saying Migrants is that... Migrants have become very common. So like, like Shruti no talked or about a person who went to that fruit vendor and left the person there and walked off. Yes, sir. You are talking about people being left in a hospital. Yes, people were marched together, sir. Okay, so one, just a query to you. Do you all have a documentation system where this could, could you could tell us how many such cases are there? There are around uh, at least one or two cases uh, every three months in uh, practically every ward. In, in Maragao? Unknown. They come as unknown. This is this hospital you are talking about? Emergency, uh, by one not eight brings them to the hospitals. Okay. Many elderly paralyzed with stroke. And okay, they... okay. So, I think this is one thing that we could we could take up as a follow up. If we can have a compiled, we can get a compilation, say for six months or one year. I think this is a good issue which even we can discuss with the legal aid cells. About this whole question of information. Information of the person. And, and whereabouts, etc. So this is something that we'll have to work on into documentation. Uh, just a point of information when uh, Mr. Ka Umesh Kankar will come. As I have reminded you, there is a uh, form for registration of senior citizens at the police station. Okay? So keep that in mind. You can talk to him and ask him how he uh, wants to address them. Yeah. Sir, hi. This is Angela Lobo. And uh, I would like to have a special legal cell for senior citizens because it is only after the retirement that the most of the legal cases are faced by the senior citizen and it takes 10 years, 15 years, 16 years for no reason. It's very sad to see in the court, uh, to see a senior citizen sit, sitting there and being tensed and all. So the period should, uh, of the legal cases should be limited. To certain extent, every now and then we go in the court, we hear dates are given, dates are given, and no hearing. After three dates, the hearings are done. Okay, let me let me. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, in at least uh, the Mamlazar offices, we do have legal aid persons available there who can uh, give you basic information about what are the things required. What what are the things required for your certificates or whatever. And uh, plus they are in contact with the legal aid sales of uh, the Sargonkar College or the, the, so they do help in this thing. Second thing, as far as senior citizens, we do have, uh, we do Fast try time. to give priorities to the cases. Sure, yeah. uh, we try, uh, once you have informed a uh, court that uh, you are a senior citizen and uh, you are given your social uh, security card, uh, that uh, senior citizen's card, we do give priority for hearing, uh, and uh, we try to give lesser interval dates for such cases. And uh, I think it's working. At least, at least I feel that it's working. And it's not, not brought to the notice that STM will try to help you. STM or the Mamrudar. Right. I, I think you're speaking, you're speaking of the other courts, right? Civil, civil and criminal courts. So, so what we could do is, what we could do is, since both the law colleges are here, they could, they could examine a proposal like this put it up to the government in both districts, what can be done? Because see, legal aid is accepted and understood as something that's available. How to make this faster and how do people say that and functional and say that I'm a senior citizen. I do you start your case when you're 55, but when you're 60, you pull out your card and say, sir, I'm now a senior citizen, fast track my case. Now, is it possible? Can we do it? 
Will the judge consider it? Question mark. But I think there is nothing like crime. No, no. So can we have both the law colleges to take note? We won't address this question here right now because of time. But actually, directors have already been Yeah. Regarding on priority basis, senior citizens' cases are to be taken up. I think it started already in all the courts. But ma'am is saying my case is right. Suppose she says the no, case it is just start. I mean, I don't mean to say it's actually happening everywhere, but yeah. it, that process has started already because circular has been issued by the government of India from the ministry concerned to the Supreme Court, and Supreme Court has issued it to all the high courts, and high courts have further issued it down to the district courts. This yeah. much has happened. Yeah. And there have been many decisions also on senior citizens' uh, priority basis. Cases are being taken up. But we can also, through ourselves, uh, continue with this matter by bringing it to the notice of the legal aid cells in the courts. Ma'am, you are part of the senior citizens forum? Yourself? Uh, no. In Margaon or any group? Okay. Where do you live? I live in Panjim. Panjim City Corporation. Yeah. Okay. You see, what I'm saying is that these are issues that we need to flag with our local self governments. Mm -hmm. Also, we have uh, after we have discussed with uh, Bush uh, Foundation, we are also talking about how CCP or councils can have a counselling room in their building. You know. So we need to we need to think uh, uh, ahead, and I think this is a very good point you're making. We need to examine it and see the operational requirements. How will this work? How will it be functionally possible? This is something that we can take up. Okay? Yeah. Sir, uh, today is, uh, senior citizens are, are our goal. Yeah. Now what happens is, um, my observation it is, that a senior citizen, when he is given a card, he is taken the number. We believe now we are in a technology uh, um, era. So, to make it very simple, the government could give directions, there are very less cases which are coming, only one case came. So if the government starts sending a WhatsApp message or in a technology to his mobile, all your problems, please come to so and so. Instead of the senior citizen going to the government, you are inviting him to come to the authority. Okay. That would be my suggestion. Okay. So that you can have yeah. a yeah. better administration, peaceful administration with integrity. So okay. you know every person or in Goa State. Yeah. Can I suggest one thing? Just write it down, if you don't mind. Yeah. Because I think you, you know what you want to say. Yeah. You have it all in your mind. Yeah. Then just say it because there towards are, the end of the program. There are people it. adversely affected in many parameters of law, right. of administration, right. and right. they cannot talk to any person. Right. Right. So they don't have the grounds. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so at the end, uh, now let's, let's one minute, one minute. Uh, start and we'll go back this side. Start here. I just wanted to say you're talking about having telephone numbers, but I'm involved in making many senior citizens' cards, and most of them do not write a number. Yeah, yes, so it will be made. It, I mean, there is a space to write your number, but many senior citizens either don't have a mobile number or they don't want you to write. Yeah, but no what I suggest is education is a process of civilization from a better way. Yeah. Or better things. You, you so have a point. Do the card, yeah, maybe yeah. make a card. I have done it for my father, who is a senior citizen, retired from director health services. He didn't know all this. I gave the email, I created an email for him, and I gave the number. So it is our duty. I am young, but I have to hold my father. Exactly. Right? So we can make some corrective things in the form. So encourage them to write. See, they may think, what is number? See, this is also the negative mindset. So what you are saying is very good. In fact, if the senior citizen says, I am on WhatsApp, and I have got a smartphone. Yeah, so this is this is very important we can add. Yes, Venya. I am aware that the GCCI has what is called a conciliation service. But there are three lawyers who are in it. Now, do these kind of cases come up and will those lawyers handle this? We will have to put the question to GCCI to find out because I know GCCI has many committees. But if this is functional... It is started you, only last year, okay. end of last year. Yeah. So we can ask them to upload it on their website. You see, so people may have access to it. You said conciliation committee. Conciliation service, they call it. Okay, conciliation service. There are yeah. three lawyers. Yeah, fine. Right. We'll pursue that. Yes. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, having read through the act, it is more of an appellate jurisdiction given to a district magistrate. Uh, sir, do you think that lacking a particular s specialization in dealing with cases, because civil court jurisdiction has been excluded, is it creating any kind of problem in disposing of the appeals more? Uh, 
more uh, like appropriately and such. Uh, uh, I think uh, we do not have a num any number of cases so that I can make a comment because I think at my SDM levels also, I am the appellate to the SDM sort. At my SDM level also hardly one or two cases are there. So I cannot make a comment whether it's really affecting that maybe if more cases do come in, then we can analyze if they are having any problems or anything. But I think uh, maybe one reason could be that they already heard that uh, the SDM cases get delayed and all those things. So they are not approaching the SDMs first of all for that reason. But as I said, we do give priority and we try to finish those cases early. So I think uh, if more people do come in, then we will be able to analyze what, what requires to be done. <coughs> One thing I still want to remind you uh, as, 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 as a follow-up, see there are some two important days which are coming along. So uh, think about it. One is the Elder, elder Abuse Day uh, in June, right, 12th? Well, exact date, we will announce it. But 1st of October, as you know, 1st of October is the Senior Elders Day. Now, now, I'm just saying this because when you break for lunch, you chat among yourselves. You see, it's very important for us along the way to see how much of what we are talking yeah, here, yeah, yeah. we can operationalize three months, five months, six months down the line, okay? So if you can think about that and you've got some good ideas, proposals, you can jot it down. So at the end when we wrap up, you know, we can have a bank of things that people can do, okay? We can put in our hand to that bank and choose what activities I can do, how can I collaborate with the district magistrate, you know? Uh, there are so many things that can happen. So the question is that, Instead of just having one function on uh, Mr. DeCosta with the senior citizen forum, he is struggling to have a program. You know, if he feels he that program is happening all over Goa, he is going to be happy. You understood? So, if you can look at these days uh, as, as important days in your calendar, it is nothing like it. Okay. Yeah, so can we wrap it up and uh, you know, Thank you all and that uh, concludes our session on action plan for protection and life and property role of the district magistrate. And a sincere thanks and an appreciation to our uh, dynamic uh, collector and district magistrate, North Goa, Mr. Swapti Ram Naik, for uh, those expert comments on the subject. And on behalf of the organizers, kindly accept a uh, token of our appreciation from the coordinator of work and Mr. Rosenbach.